We have been so excited to get our hands on the invasion. We got an arc of the call a couple years ago and were blown away by how grim and dark it was. We even had the chance to interview the author Powder, who was completely charming and gave us a lot of insight on his writing process. This book finishes off the duology, picking up a short way after the events of the call. Nessa has survived her trip to Fairy and now looks forward to the rest of her life, which she hopes to spend with Anto. But as she's on the bus to go see him, she's pulled over and arrested for being a traitor. After the last attack on the school, the government is finally wise to the fact that some of the survivors of the call have actually made deals with Fairy to ensure that they were returned home mostly intact. And of course, the most obvious candidate for unlikely survivor is the girl on crutches who no one thought would have a chance to make it through. Nessa is thrown in jail, and despite the fact that she does manage to convince a couple of people that she is innocent, Fairy manages to interfere and she is given capital punishment. AKA put on a boat and sailed into the mist that surrounds Ireland, which is a one-way ticket to ferry with no return ticket booked. Adder did a fantastic job with the Greylands the first time. It's the one place Nessa does not want to go back to and it's the one place I have no desire to see again. Like, Ever. It's a moment equivalent to the one in Catching Fire where Katniss learns that she has to go back into the Hunger Games and you're like, no, you promised, never again. Blood sucking trees that swallow you whole, creatures that want to poke your eyeballs out, pits that want to devour you, not to mention the fairies that will horribly mutilate you and then make you serve them for an eternity if they catch you. Nessa survived once, but she had only to survive for one fairy day. And it was pure luck that Connor had bargained that he would be the one who would get to kill her. Now, Nessa is stuck in fairy with no way back, and the fairies are still looking for her. Nessa's perspective isn't the only one we get in this novel. We also get Anto's perspective, which is almost as horrifying as Nessa's now that the fairies' assault on Ireland has begun. That's right. King Dagna's hope to take over Ireland did not end with the death of Connor. The fairies have been planning their revenge for a long time. Too long to let a little hiccup like the death of a human king get in their way. Fairies have begun pouring into Ireland with their mutilated human monstrosities to wreak havoc on the population. Anto gets drafted into the military. Eventually his duties lead him back to the school where he becomes involved in escorting what's left of the students back behind human lines. Poor Anto has new problems to deal with. He's hoping to reunite with Nessa, but when he learns that she's turned traitor, he has a hard time dealing with that reality. He's also struggling with his oversized arm, but it turns out it's a perfect tool for fighting. Between the two main characters, Nessa is the stronger of the two because you went through so much with her last book. You never stop rooting for her and you never stop being impressed by her ingenuity. Of course you like Anto too with his pacifist ways and his absolute devotion to Nessa, but he's outshined by her in every way. Through Anto we get to see some of the new twisted human monstrosities, including two-headed giants with creepy raven woman things, and worst of all, gargantuan beasts that are just sick amalgamations of hundreds of shrieking humans mashed together into one creature. My favorite. There have been medieval pictures of hell that have had more pleasant imagery. The invasion reads more like a fairy tale than the call did. Nessa has to make a long journey while being tricky and wary of everything, while well, Anto gets to drift from one horror to the next. The end of the invasion is exactly what you wanted it to be. Bittersweet and leaves you with the right amount of questions that you're satisfied but not bored. There is never a dull moment in the invasion, mostly because you're too horrified to be bored, but also because Patter never lets the scene get dull as you learn new things and get introduced to new memorable characters or thrown into dangerous situations along with Nessa and Anto. Between the call and the invasion, this is a duology that you're not going to be forgetting anytime soon. We look forward to whatever he wants to write next, and in the meantime, to everyone looking for something a little dark or spooky or different, we recommend The Call and The Invasion. Thank you for watching our review of The Invasion, guys. If you want to know exactly what happens in The Invasion, check out our spoiler review. And if you liked our video and you would like to see more, please give us a subscribe, guys. That would really help us out. Thanks for watching and we will see you guys later.